Okay, so this is now part two of dentition, and we will be discussing um, your premolars and molars. Collectively, they're called the molariform or post canine or cheek teeth. So first, um, just a few things for premolars. Essentially, you can find them just behind the canines, and what differentiates them from molars is that they are present in both deciduous and permanent dentitions, whereas for molars, you find them only in the permanent dentition. Okay. And compared to molars, premolars are usually smaller and they have fewer cusps than molars. Oh, what happened? Okay, sorry. So um, there is your premolars and there is your molars. Okay. Okay. So um, now um, we mentioned that um, molars and premolars they have a lot of cusps, and so essentially these cusps actually have names. All right. So depending on where you are, if you are in the upper jaw, essentially the uh, cusps net end in the suffix cone, all right? But if you are in the lower jaw, then you just replace the E at the end with an ID, so conid, 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 okay? So the hypocone is actually the fourth cusp, and the, um, in this example that we have here, we have just three, okay? Which is your primitive um, insectivorous tooth, okay? So, uh, we're not really going to discuss where they are, essentially, because that's for a little bit advanced, but it's important that you know that the cusps have names. So aside from cone, so if you have smaller cones right there, so you call them conials if they're on the upper jaw, and conial lids if they're in the lower jaw. Also, um, at the part of your tooth, so at the labial side, at, at the, the side near the lips, you also have what you call a stylar shelf. And then you also have names for the cusps there, like the peristyle, the metastyle, and also for the cingulum. So you also have a, another shelf there at the lingual side, it's called a cingulum. And so uh, there are also names for the cusps that you can find there, okay? So there are a lot of names. Yes. So, yep. Shit. Okay. Anyway, um, now let's uh, look, okay, at the anatomy. So, let's, um, at, in your actual tooth, so you find that this here is the paracone, and your metacone is here, and your protocone is here. And the cingulum is what I mentioned, it's a shelf here, and this part is a stylar shelf. So you may think that the cusp here is perhaps the paracone, but actually, it's already the parasite. So the cusps along the styles, I mean, along the stylar shelf, yeah, they have different names. Okay? So just a clue, um, usually the protocone and the paracone are always found anteriorly. Whereas your metacone and your fourth cusp, the hypocone, they're usually found posterior. So let's take a look at the lower, um, the j uh, sorry, the teeth um, on the lower jaw. So this time for your tribosphenic teeth, um, they look a bit different. So actually there's an additional part here. So this part, this triangular part here, that's called the trigonid area. And this part here at the back is the talonid basin. And so when we take a look at the cones, so you find that the hypoconid, because we are on the lower jaw, is found here. Okay. Then there are, of course, smaller cusps, the hypoconulid, there's also the endoconid, so there's a lot of names, very confusing, but what's important is that, again, you know that they have names, okay? If you want to give um, names to, you know, the specimens that we have, that's totally fine, okay? Yeah. So now, in terms of cusps, how many, okay? So for incisors, for example, in canines, they have one cusp, so it's just unique cuspid so on and so forth. Bicuspid means two, tricuspid, tribosphenic or tritubercular means three, and of course you have quadratubercular which has four cusps, okay? Yeah. So now let's look at the types of um, occlusal surfaces of your cheek teeth. So the first one is your tribosphenic or tritubercular. So this is essentially one of the most primitive types of occlusal surfaces that you find and mostly you find these in insectivores, okay? So again, um, we uh, you already saw this slide a while ago, so you can just look at the anatomy and review the anatomy of the tooth later. 
Now for the modifications, um, essentially, your tribosphenic teeth, they can be modified because they have what we call these ridges that are called ectolophs. So you can see, so these ridges essentially connect the different cusps, okay? So for example, um, so you have your protocone here, so you have your paracone that's connected to the stylar shelf, so on and so forth. So um, what happens is the first one is the lambdodon. So lamb from the word lambda, which is essentially V, okay? So the lambdodon means you have one V, so you can see that they have these V's there, okay? So those ectolofts that connect the different cusps, okay? And then you have di, lambda don, di means two. So you have two V's, so essentially they look like W's. Okay, so if we take a look here, so you will see that your pericone and your metacone are connected to the cusps along the stylar shelf by these ectolofts, okay? So in some cases, I think in your manual, there is what we call the tubercular sectorial, which is described similarly as dilambdodon. I have been trying to clarify this, but I haven't really found a very solid piece of literature to say that they are the same or that one is a subtype of another. But the fact that they're described or their descriptions are very similar, I will accept both answers in the exam. Whether you write tubercular sectorial or dilambdodon, it's totally fine. For dilambdodont dentition, you find that in tupiids and also insectivorous bats, okay? Now, the next one is what we call euthymorphic, which is often um, the teeth for euthymorphic um, types of occlusal surfaces. They have um, four cusps, and quadrate means they are square-shaped, okay? So, we will have some examples. So, we will discuss these, bunodont, salidondont, and lophodont, a little later. So this example that we have here first is the bunodont dentition, okay? So in here, we have the addition of the fourth cusp, it's called the hypocone, okay? And uh, so this is the tooth, I think, of an, uh, a hedgehog, okay? So here you have the four basic cusps, but it can become a little more complicated if you have additional conules, okay? But essentially, if you find that there are four main cusps, you're pretty sure that's bunodont, okay? Next, you have lophodont teeth. So, loph means ridge, so that means that um, your main cusps are, again, connected by lophs, okay? So, or by ridges, okay? So, we have here examples, and usually for a lophodont dentition or for lophodont teeth, you find that mostly in... Um, granivorous or graminivorous or seed eaters, grain eaters, um, and also herbivorous um, types of mammals, okay? And then we have a special type of lophodont teeth. You call this loxodont teeth. So you can find this, of course, in your elephants, hence the name loxodonta, okay? So what they have is they pretty much look like a washboard. So right there. So that's pretty much how it is, okay? So essentially, it's still lophodont, but except that they look like your standard washboard. So if they kind of look like this, you're, you know, you can say it's loxodont, okay? You also find this in some rodents. And then next is bilophodont, which means you have two lofts. Um, what happens here is that your metacone and hypocone are connected and your pericone and your protocone are connected as well. So those are the, so the lofts connect um, each of those two, okay? So here, the example that we have is of a baboon, okay? There. So take a look at that. Right. So not all cases, like not all primates have bunodont dentition. So um, sometimes they can have lophodont dentition like this one. And also, now let's look at other herbivores, like grazers and browsers. So they have what we call selenodont teeth, in which instead of having the ridges run from labial to lingual, um, the ridges are from labial 
to lingo, what happens is that the, for selenodont, the ridges are from anterior to posterior. So the ridges run this way, okay? And they are often crescent shaped, hence seleno or seleno, so from the moon, okay? There, so crescent shaped, right? And now um, we have a special type for equids or horses. Essentially, this is still lophodont dentition, but because they have also these crescent shapes here, so the um, it's more of like a combination of selenodont and lophodont, so it's selenolophodont, okay? There. Now, for those that specialize in eating meat, they have what we call cecodont or sectorial dentition. So plagia eulacoid is um, a special type for herb herbivores, but essentially it also promotes a slicing or shearing motion. So for carnivores, um, this is best expressed by your carnasal teeth, in which you have these guys. So it's this tooth and this one. So in carnivores, it's always the fourth upper premolar and your first lower molar. Okay, And believe it or not, they, there are still cusps and they still have the names. Okay, Protocone, paracone, and metacone. So they're still right here. Okay. All right. So, and this one is the plagia eulacoid dentition of a betonja. So, um, if you look at this inside view, it kind of looks something like this. Okay. And there are some bumps right there. But as you can see from superior view, it's pretty flat. Okay. All right, so that's basically the modification of the occlusal surfaces of your cheek teeth. So there are many different kinds. So um, in general, the, the, these surfaces are very diverse, and it depends a lot on the diet of the organism. You will usually find lophodont and selenodont dentition for herbivores, graminivores, granivores. You will usually find... Um, Carnasal teeth for carnivores and bunodont dentition for omnivores. Okay, so if you want to um, have more in-depth information, you can always check out this website. So that's mainly where I got most of the pictures. So I would like to thank the owners of these photos. And um, yeah, again, I don't own these photos. So uh, in the next part, we'll be discussing the dental formula. So I hope you learned a little bit of something, and thank you very much.